Sweet, sweet violence. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Esports Monies, ESM, MAC-10, whatever you want to call me, and today we're going to go over my guy jungling, Life Stealer. This is not a perfect run-through, I make a few mechanical errors, but overall this is a pretty solid run, and it's pretty reminiscent of a real game, because it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good. What is Life Stealer as a jungler? So, Life Stealer as a jungler is a, is a hero that is... A little bit weak when it comes to getting hits, but he's okay at that. He's he's pretty good at that. He's like a Wraith King at that. His But his primary limiting resource, and the thing that can limit him in the jungle, is the rate at which he kills creeps. So that's important to note when you think about the way that you skill him. Now, Life Stealer is a hero that is played a variety of different ways. People will, literally in the pro scene, they'll play him as a position 1 hard carry. And you'll also see him played as a mid-game core. Um, maybe a position 2, I wouldn't say a traditional mid, but a position 2 hero. And again, he's relatively good at jungling, so if you can't already see what I'm getting at, he's a hero that's good at jungling, and he's a hero that is viable with a lot of different builds and a handful of different positions or a handful of different uh, positions in terms of farm on your team. So there are a lot of ways to play this hero overall. There are a lot of ways to jungle the hero. There are a lot of ways to look at the jungling for this hero. Some people look at a nature's prophet and go, I want to get a Blightstone, Power Treads, and a Null Talisman as quickly as possible, and then teleport all over the map and gang people. There are also people that look at Nature's Prophet and say, I'm going to rush a Hand of Midas. Now, generally speaking, people would say that the Midas build is the worst of the two, but really it depends on the situation, depends what you're doing. Neither one are objectively a hun wrong 100% or right 100% of the time. And so the way I like to play Life Stealer is sort of the former of those first two builds I talked about. A lot of people will send Life Stealer to the jungle and get a Midas. They'll put additional points in Feast. They might even get a Quelling or a, not a Quelling Blade, a Stout Shield to make yourself more safe in the jungle and make yourself safer getting farm. But Life Stealer is a strength core that slows enemy heroes down with a built-in BKB. He's kind of built to fight all game, which means he's probably better on in the early game, and unless you're against a very, very, very heavy strength core lineup, Life Stealer is an early to mid game carry in the way that I play him and the way that I see the hero as his position in the world. So the way that I play Life Stealer, I'm going to rush an armlet as quickly as possible, and I'm going to use that armlet to fight. Now you may notice my skill build, you always get a point in your passive life steal to start off the fight. Remember that's a percentage of current health, so uh, the higher, the more hit points a creep has, the more health they're going to get from hitting them. And then I put a point in my Q, my Rage, it gives me attack speed and the miniature BKB. And what this Q is used for is it allows me to deal additional damage because it gives me 40 attack speed at level 1. And I'm only going to have it at level 1 for a long time, guys. And it gives me that BKB so that if I have the mana for it, and again, it's relatively low mana, it's like 75 mana, so it's pretty cheap. If I'm getting ganked up in the jungle at low levels, I might be able to BKB and beeline it out of there. Now, as you can see, I'm at around 40%, 45% health right now, so you're not always going to be that high in health. You might still get killed, but it is a slightly safer choice. Um, and then I keep that single value point in my passive feast, and then I have every other point drops in open wounds. And now you're thinking to, to, to yourself, I should turn this guy off. This guy's an idiot. Why does he only put, like, points in open wounds from level 3 on? And the reason being is, no, it doesn't. If you just, if you make contact, you don't care about the cooldown or the mana cost, then it really doesn't give you that much. The thing that makes open wounds great, and the reason that you want to put points into it, is that years ago it was nerfed, and the cast range of it scales with level now. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't always this way. It's been this way for a few years. But open wounds need several points for you to have that wide cast range I just showed off. So if you put three or four points into it, you have a short cooldown on a spell that grants 50% lifesteal on any damage that's done to the target you use it on, alongside a significant slow, and now you have it again on a lower cooldown and at a significantly lower mana cost, and lifestealer is a mana-starved hero. And if you're planning on getting kills with him, you can see he's kind of chunky. You want phase boots so you can catch your opponents. 
So I max out my open wounds with a point in my Q, a point in my W, and a point in my ulti. And what this allows me to do is this allows me to use my phase boots to catch the enemy hero and use my armlet to get the additional damage and attack speed necessary to kill said heroes. It's pretty solid. It's a way, it's the way I think the hero should be played. It's not a super, super hard carry. Yes, you can grow into one. But it allows you to fight at a relatively early time. This jungling guide will go until about 11 minutes game time. And at 11 minutes game time, I have my armlet, my iron talon, and my phase boots. I don't even buy a stout shield. And again, before you freak out, I would not be using my all, all game long to farm. But in the early game especially, it's very efficient. You kill the creep you infest that's money and experience, and you do massive AoE damage to everyone around him, that makes the camp easier to kill, and it has a relatively low mana cost of only 50 mana, so really the only thing that you waste when you blow it to farm is 100 second cooldown. So the way that I try, the, the perfect way to play Lifestealer in my opinion is you want to grab a creep and mind control creep like a centaur um, or an ursa or ideally a troll, the big troll, because then you can net someone. You net someone, walk up to them, explode the creep and do the AoE damage to them, and then open wounds them, raid yourself, pop your armlet, and when open wound starts to fade, and that move speed starts to come back on your opponent, then hit your face boot so you can continue to connect and continue making those right clicks. I know I've talked a lot about the strategy of this build and the way that I like to play the hero and the way that I look at the hero more than I've talked about the actual actual tactics of jungling him. But the actual tactics are relatively straightforward. Once you understand what you're going for and what the skill build is, and you see the choke points I'm us using, really it's just those two chokes, you're pretty good. If you were wondering what was going on with the Ancients over there, I typically don't fight the Ancients until I have my armlet, because the Ancients are very, very tough for you to kill. Um, unless you, like, luck out and get a, an easy camp uh, at the Ancients. By easy, I mean one that's um, not the new camp, the caster camp, and not the Mud Golems. So, pretty straightforward hero, pretty straightforward way to play the hero, and once you have those three items, you're pretty set. You can roam around the map and fight. Now, if you really want to, you can put a couple more points in Rage early on, or an additional point in Rage in favor of only having three in your open wounds. Because, yes, it gets to a point where your cast range is already kind of, is, is big enough, because you really just need to get that, that catch on. But, that cooldown is still there, and that mana cost is still there, though you don't care as much about the mana, because you have only two other skills, one of which is your ulti, um, because you have the passive. But still, it's something to think about. It's the way that I think the hero should be played. Um, it's the way that I most enjoy playing the hero. Um, and you can kind of see me just messing around here at the end. Now, sure, you can do the same thing I just said. Put an extra point into fees, uh, get a stout shield if you want or not, and then buy a Midas. Do, do whatever you want. But this is the way that I think is the most efficient way to play the hero. My name is Esports Money, ZSM, Mac10, whatever you want to call me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe and check out the Amazon links in the video description to support the channel. Thanks very much, guys, and peace out.